All right, thank you guys for coming today. I'm really excited. Today we're going to be doing watercolor leaves and laurels. My name is Lauren Betancourt, um, and we're going to today mostly be talking about brush technique. I'm going to teach you some different techniques using the round brush that's in your kit. I'm about to go through all the supplies that you have today, but um, today we're going to mostly be learning how to use that brush, and we're going to do that through some step-by-step -step instructions on how to paint some beautiful leaves and greenery, and then we're going to take that, what we learned, and put it into wreaths and laurels. So I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you for joining. Um, so let's get started. We'll look at your kits first. So in your kits today, first you've got your paper. For those of you that came in early, I already told you this, but whenever you're pulling your paper out, this is the hand and mule paper we're going to be using today. They are excellent. Great paper. So for those of you who are beginners or if you're more advanced and know how to watercolor and have been watercoloring a lot, this is, I highly recommend them. You, all their information is here. You can go check them out. But when you're pulling your paper out of your bag, make sure when you pour it, pull it like this and then set it down, this is the good side. Like it's going to be on top. So there is a good side and a bad side when it comes to watercolor paper. A lot of people don't know that. So, and honestly, it would be okay if you ended up painting on the wrong side, but it's gonna turn out, everything you paint will turn out a lot better if you paint on that correct side of the paper. So make sure you're on the correct side. Um, it's gonna be a slightly more textured. So the good side of the paper, it's very subtle. So it's kind of hard, unless you're really familiar with watercolor paper and you've been working with it a lot, it's a very slight variance. But the good side is a little bit more um, textured, like more bumps and ridges on it, whereas the back side is a little more concave and it feels a little flatter to the touch. When you look at it with the naked eye, they look pretty similar. But the bad side is just gonna be a little flatter to the touch. So that's kind of how you know. Then you should have a pencil and also your brush. So this is a number six round brush. This brush is the most versatile brush in my opinion. That's why I'm giving it to you today. Everything that we're going to be painting, you can do with this brush. There's all kinds of different brush brushes in watercolor, flat brushes, round brushes, the, the script brushes, tiny ones. Um, but your middle of the road round brush, which is number six is kind of middle of the road. You can have the fatter ones or the thinner ones. But with this one, you can do so much in watercolor. And that's just if you know how to use the brush, how to hold the brush, how to paint with the brush, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So this brush will get you a very long way, and it's the one that I use most often in all of my paintings. And then the last thing is your paint palette. So you'll notice uh, it's got this plastic sleeve on it. You can go ahead and pop that off because we're going to be using that. And inside, there's 10 different wells of watercolor. A lot of times when people think watercolor, you think like back in kindergarten and preschool when you have those little bitty circles and you add water to it, which is legitimate. That's watercolor for sure. But the kind that we're using today and the kind that I use most often it comes in little tubes. So this is tube paint watercolor. The one you're using today is Reeves. It's called Reeves. And most everything that you have in your kit, with the exception of the paper, I just got it at Michael's. You can pick it up at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or any kind of craft store. But Reeves paint is great. It's at what well, it's at Michael's, and it's a good middle of the road paint. Um, one thing with watercolor, the quality of the supplies that you purchase and use is going to highly affect the outcome of your watercolor project or painting, whatever you're doing. So I really wanted to, I want to stress that if you're going to buy the cheapest paper and you're going to use the cheapest paint with the cheapest brushes, it really will affect the outcome as opposed to if you're buying the high dollar, really pro professional grade things. Everything we're using today is high quality, but it's that middle of the road, kind of middle echelon. So you have really good supplies that you should be able to take home and use for multiple, multiple paintings um, several months in advance. So you'll notice on the palette, uh, this paint is dry, like you can touch it. It's a little bit tacky, but it should be completely dry. That's on purpose. So a lot of people don't know when you're using watercolor, a great tip and what I do all the time is I'll squirt a little bit of that paint out from the tube and let it dry overnight or even several days in advance. And even my palette at home that I use, I have dried paint on there from months and weeks ago and it never goes bad. I mean, it, maybe if you left it on there for years, I'm sure it would be a little weird, but, but is, if you're painting fairly often, even if you leave it on there for months at a time, it's going to be fine. You just add a little bit of water and use it and it will a help extend the shelf life of your paint tubes because watercolor materials are really not cheap. They're pretty expensive. So you're buying these tiny tubes that are kind of high dollar, but if you dry the paint out in advance, they last so much longer. Whereas if you just use it straight out of the tube and add water, you're going to go through the paint very quickly. So that's just a little tip if you're wanting to watercolor frequently, get you a good palette, dry the paint out in advance, and you can use it a lot longer. I also think it's a lot easier to work with when it's dry. It kind of gives you a little more control and allows you to um, to choose the consistency of the watercolor that you're using. One awesome thing about watercolor, and the reason that I love the medium, 
is it's transparent and you can use the water to your advantage. We're gonna talk a little bit about that today. So the more water that you use, obviously, the lighter the color, um, the more transparent the hue. And you, it's the only paint medium that you can do that and achieve that effect. So that's one thing I really love about it. And when you dry the paint in advance, you can really, um, you, you can decide how thick of paint you want, the consistency that you have, the boldness of the color, all of those things. So hopefully by the end of today, you'll be a little more comfortable with watercolor and we'll have some beautiful leaves down. So the two basic things that you need to learn or need to know when you're painting leaves is basically the direction and the brush stroke, the brush technique. So when I say direction, I mean greenery is very organic. And with flowers, this is the same thing. When you're painting any kind of nature elements, you wanna first kind of figure out the direction that you want that painting to go. So when I say direction, I mean like the direction of the leaf. We're gonna be wherever you, obviously, how you hold your brush and the technique that you use is going to um, create that direction and that movement on the page. So you wanna first think about direction. Second is the brush, brush stroke, and that encompasses two different things. So the first thing is the angle. This is the angle that you hold your brush. You, know, you can either hold it like this and kind of touch the paper where it's, your, all the, four, the bristles are all on the page, or you can be very on top of it, like this angle, where you're using the tip of that brush and you create a very thin line. That's why the round brush is so versatile, because you can either get that thin line if you just have very light pressure and you're holding the brush like this, or if you hold it at that angle and apply more pressure, you're gonna create a more of a thick line, more organic feel. So that's what we're gonna be getting, practicing today and getting used to. Um, so I said there's two things in a brush stroke, the angle and the pressure. Angle is how you're holding your brush. The pressure is how much pressure you're placing the bristles on the page to create the movement. And that's the only thing you need to know. Once you know how to paint leaves, you can create a wreath or a laurel of any, in any direction as long as you know how to paint those leaves and then apply it to the principles we're gonna talk about today. First, we're gonna be doing the salal leaf. The salal leaf that I painted here is just your green that's straight out of the tube, so it's this color. So you can go ahead and start, get that brush wet. These are brand new brushes, so if you have one of those um, tubes on the top of it, the clear tubes, pop that off. Get your brush wet and kind of press it down to the bottom of your cup, because we wanna really massage those brushes. And then you're going to wet your green paint. So we're looking for a consistency that it depends on, honestly, the color of leaf that you want. If you want a really deep, rich green leaf, you're going to add less water. If you want light, transparent leaf, which is kind of more what I lean, lean toward, is more water. Um, because then you can add different layers and create some depth. And I'll show you a little bit about that. And you can see here how I'm getting that green paint wet, and you gotta just add as much water as you want to, but kind of massage that paint, get the paint wet and malleable a little bit with that brush, those bristles, and fill that, fill your bris bristles with that green paint. So you can kind of see here the consistency that we're going for. Then once you're satisfied and you have the paint full on your bristles, you're gonna create, so I thought about direction, right? I know which wood direction I want it to go. For the salal leaf that we're doing today, you're gonna to just do a V. So a V shape, just like that. So basically for a basic standard leaf, like the salal leaf, it's gonna be a two stroke leaf. So I always start when I'm painting leaves, I'm gonna start at the tip of that leaf and I'm gonna drag my brush at the right angle down it to meet the stem. So instead of starting at the stem, you're gonna start at the tip. It's always gonna be easier that way. And you're gonna use the very tip of your brush for the edge of that, for the very tip of the leaf. You're gonna slide, you're gonna press down at an angle and get one side, and then you're gonna re repeat that same step on the other side. So you can watch me here as we're doing it. So you start with, you always start with your stem. That creates the direction you're going. We're gonna do just a V shape, just like that. And you can see how I have light pressure at the tip. I'm using the tip of my brush. Then I'm pressing down at an angle and releasing that pressure coming back toward the stem. And then I repeat that on the other side. So you should be able to create this leaf effect with just two strokes if you're doing it correctly. You start at the tip and then you press down, release back towards the stem on one side and then repeat that same movement and motion on the other side. And it does take practice. Um, it, it's just you know getting the right angle and the right pressure to where you've got the same half a leaf on one side half a leaf on the other but the more that you do it the easier it will get just make sure you've got it's all about pressure and angle so holding that at an angle starting with the tip and then pressing using all of the bristles 
but they're short strokes. So we're gonna be doing some more leaves here in a minute that are longer strokes. This is a, a short stroke leaf with two strokes. So once you have your leaves there, while it's still wet, so I'm gonna continue, because we want your leaves to still be wet. They don't have to be totally like super wet or super dry really, but I'm gonna go back into my paint palette and I'm adding some black. So I'm gonna get a darker shade of that green. I'm just adding black into that green spot there to create this darker tint of green. And while it's still wet, I can go back in with that dark green and kind of dab some darker spots into these leaves. And the water is gonna do most of the work for you. So when you add a little bit of a darker shade or darker hue of, a, of something into whatever it is you're painting, the water's gonna take that, that darker color and kind of spread it just enough to give you a little bit more depth and dimension. It just makes your leaves a little more interesting. So you don't even have to add this step, but if you do add a little bit of a different color or a different shade, and dab it into the bottom of those leaves, it's gonna create a little bit more um, of a depth and make the leaves a little more interesting. So here's the final Salal leaf that you should have in that top left-hand corner. 